Good morning, my name is Brent, and we are here at the abandoned mining town of Cerro Gordo. And this is where I live. You know, this is where I spend my days. And I wanna show you guys what a typical day looks like. All right, all right, all right. Time to get up. <sighs> Rise and shine. Yeah, I think we'll go to Sarah Gordo trip today. So the first thing I like to do, even before making breakfast or doing anything else, is go for a hike. And so, to catch the sunrise, I wake up kind of early, somewhere around six. And then it's almost like a race is on, because I don't want to get up first, but then I really want to see the sunrise as soon as it's coming up. So then I'm like, all right, well, if I'm up, I may as well hurry and get out there. I've been in very few places in my life that there's ever been this sense of stillness or calmness. You know, I'm used to growing up, even in the suburbs, there's always some noises, but here, no noises. And it's just the sense of presence that I get here that I never had in the city. I think I can sit here and I can notice how the bushes are going in the wind or which way the bird is flying or yeah, any crack in any branch I hear, so I wonder, what is that crawling around? And it just kind of brings you very much back into the present. So this is how I start off my mornings at Cerro Gordo. Uh, I do the walk, I'll sit here for maybe 20 or 30 minutes watching the sunrise. And you know, like any order, the sunrise is here different every every day, every season. I remember probably one of my first times trying to make a video, I was probably standing in a very similar position and it was snowing and I was so excited to kind of show off this view. And I'm still sh excited to show off the view. It still kind of takes my breath away every day. And I think it's that's a good pace to the morning, you know, before anything gets too crazy, I can come out here, relax, spend time by myself, well, I always spend time by myself, but you know, computers and phones away and just kind of think about, you know, yesterday, what I want to do today. And then, you know, we'll see what the rest of the day holds. Before even going back inside, feed the goats. Good morning, guys. Is this what you're looking for? A little bit of this morning at Tofu. You're always the most vocal one out of the group. And there you go. Enjoy. Tofu looking good. Tofu, you're looking nice. I think you got stuff all over you. Clean you up a little bit. This is Tofu. Tofu's doing quite good. Tofu's the most vocal of the group. She's the one that likes to alert me whenever they're even the least bit hungry. Isn't that right, Tofu? And so, you know, if a sunrise is a good way to start the day, feeding the goats isn't a bad thing to do second. After the goats are fed, it's time to feed the other animal children, the cats. The cats have upgraded. The cats live in this house now, pretty much to themselves. And, oh, there they are. Good morning. Oh, that's, that's Gordo. Hello, hello. 
Oh yes, I've missed you too. How are you? You're looking so good, you guys look great. Yep, yep. Good morning. Whole gang's here. Well, half the gang. The other half of the gang lives in a different house. How you guys doing? You guys are hungry, I bet, huh? All right. What have we got this morning? We have white fish and tuna. Oh yeah, you want the white fish and tuna? They're eating what wet food now, which is much easier than the bottle feeding thing. Obviously, they're hungry. Dig in. You guys gotta stay hydrated up here. Hydration is important, folks. The kittens are pretty much a constant source of joy, you know? Many times the other day, I'll just wander over here and play with them. It's hard to be upset when you're petting a kitten, you know? And so, they've been a welcome addition. You know, I come feed them a couple times a day, hang out with them, just watch them. What you looking for? You wanna come over? So this is the outside of my cabin. This was originally Belshaw's cook's house. So Belshaw house there was Mortimer Belshaw. And he's one of the original founders of the town. And he was so well off that he had his own cook. And this was his cook's house. And I like this cabin because it's kind of small. It's easy to maintain, you know, it's only one bedroom. And that way I can kind of have my personal space when I'm, you know, living here long-term. Razor, of course. Don't know what I would do without this thing. Went a little gas run last night. Also had to go get water. So that's the water for the goats and other things. So I'll show you guys inside here. All right, it's not quite eight yet. I'm gonna make some breakfast. Breakfast is almost always the same. I make eggs, turkey or ham. I'm gonna kind of make a sandwich out of it. My bread is frozen this morning because, you know, it's an old refrigerator, but that's surmountable, that's easy. Um, so yeah, this is the kitchen, as you can tell. Not a lot of room in here, so I don't like to eat. There's not a lot of prep space, but gets the job done. You know, even last week, I didn't have propane. I was out of propane, and getting propane's, you know, a fiasco. So I got some now, so I can kind of have it all contained here. I'd love one day to get our own chickens up here. That way I can kind of just be self-reliant and not need to go anywhere for the eggs. And I would like to get wild burrows. So apparently the BLM, Bureau of Land Management, lets you adopt wild burrows and horses. And you have to have like a 20 by 20 space for them. And I have like 500 acres. And so I'd love to have them up here. Cause how cool would it be to just have, you know, burrows running around and wild horses everywhere. I definitely think the animal game is gonna be stepped up in the next year at Cerro Gordo. Yum. This is the best bread I've had. There's this bakery not too far away from here called this. So whenever somebody visits, I ask them if they're coming through Bishop to get me some bread from here. And it's so good. Voila. Breakfast is served. I eat over at my desk slash dining area, which I know is not the best thing, but hey. There's only so much space in here. Mm. One of the hundredth best I've ever had. Gotta tell you, make enough of these, you get mediocre at it. <laughs> Time for some coffee. And we're thinking about making our own roast up here. So we're working with a roaster to make a Cerro Gordo blend. So I am sampling a bunch of different samples he sent me. And who knows, you know, in a month or so, we might have a, uh, a miner's blend or 
high grade coffee from Cerro Gordo coming soon. But for now, I'm just gonna sample them out, make sure that it's the best it can be. But I'm, I'm excited about it and I'm excited about coffee and then I'm going to get to work. All right, it's just before nine. Some people have asked in the past, what do I do? I do have a day job. You know, I have to pay the bills for Cerro Gordo. There are a lot of costs associated. So I'm a partner at a company called Brass Check. And we help authors with their books, whether it's marketing, writing them, things like that. And we own a website called Daily Stoic too, that kind of has an e-commerce arm. So I, my job is kind of just communicating with our employees, making sure that everything's going right. So I'm gonna come in here, you know, answer emails, make sure everything's going right, put out any fires I need to. That'll take a couple hours. So I'll be here for maybe two hours working on that. And then when I'm done, I get to go explore again. So I'm gonna go down to the burn site, try to find some treasure in the old dump, and then ping back in here, answer more emails. But for now, not too interesting of stuff, but I'm gonna get to work. A lot of people ask me how I get internet up here. I have, right over there, a Nighthawk router, which is basically an AT&T hotspot. Weirdly enough, AT&T has a tower on one of the neighboring mountains, and so I'm able to hotspot that signal and get okay internet. It's fine for emails and stuff, but when I need to make these videos or upload them at the very least, I'll usually time it with one of my supply runs into Lone Pine, and I know a guy down there that owns a hotel that I'll be able to sit at for a couple hours and upload stuff. So I can edit and everything here, but when it comes time to upload, I just don't have the bandwidth. So I try to time it down in Lone Pine. So some weeks, if I'm a little early or a little late, it's probably because I had to time it with my supply run. So apologies, but I do have internet up here. No, it's not fast. I don't stream anything. I'm not watching movies at night, but it does allow me to do my job and pay the bills, which, hey, it's all you can really ask for, right? And I also have, you know, Cerro Gordo stuff that I have to do online. We're actively trying to expand our merch, you know? So we got t-shirts, I got to dealing with those types of people. Uh, starting a coffee maybe, maybe a whiskey. Uh, uh, Cerro Gordo whiskey, you guys in? So just keeping up with all of them. Just, that's what I do. And those are important. But I have about two good hours of emailing and kind of dead focus in on me and then I got to bounce. So I'm coming up on that and then it is time to explore. So let me just get this final thing done. You know, stop interrupting me. I need to focus. <laughs> All right, enough emails from now. Let's go find some treasure. Today I am hunting for old bottles. Next to the hotel was the ice house. But the ice house was built about 10 years after the hotel. So for 10 years, that was a dump for the original hotel. So all sorts of stuff was thrown in there. So I am looking for old bottles, cool things that we can put into the museum or to the new hotel. And I know that they have previously found some very rare whiskey bottles here. So that's what I'm mainly looking for, whiskey bottles. But who knows what else is gonna be in there. I dug in a little bit last night. There's lots of bones in there, so that's kind of weird. But I need to break up some of the concrete pad and get to work. So without further ado, so we all came to see some treasure hunting. All right, I got the pad out and I got most of the debris from the pad. Now I'm gonna dig into this dirt. Probably isn't seen the light of day in 140 years. So I'm gonna start slowly digging through this and see what we can find. Fingers crossed for some bottles, particularly whiskey bottles, but anything could be cool. Look how big that bone is. Five minutes in, 
as you can see, there's a bunch of bone, a bunch of porcelain, and some bottles. You know, this one's the bottom of one. This is like a cork stopper or a, yeah. So I'm gonna give you a different angle to show what I'm digging into, but there's stuff there. I just gotta find it. It's obviously gonna take a long time because the pad goes way over there. But this is stuff I found so far. Tons of bone, tons of porcelain, bottles, including these bottle stoppers that say like Lee and Perrin on it, the Worcestershire sauce. This is a bone comb, which is pretty crazy. But this is my project because this pad has to go anyways. We need this to be gone and I would be afraid to break it up with large equipment because it might ruin some of the stuff underneath. So I'm just doing it manually for now. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna do this for another 30 minutes or so. This is why I do midday, kind of come back in. I've already done some email stuff. I've already done some work. I'm gonna eat, feed the animals again and carry out the rest of the day. Breakfast gets to be the same thing as lunch because I need to make a supply run. This afternoon's menu includes two burritos of eggs and turkey, some beans, some hummus, and some salsa. On a recycled plate from this morning's breakfast. Depressing? Maybe. Filling? Maybe. <laughs> so I will say that I normally make a much better lunch than this, but I'm just out of stuff, which seems to be the case often. And I think most people in this situation would kind of show some gourmet meal that they had. And obviously that's not the case here. But I remember when we first bought the property, the Today Show was gonna come up and do a segment about it. And so we were supposed to cook them lunch. And John, my partner was like, all right, I'll take care of lunch. And so when it comes time to film us making lunch, John busts out lobster tails and steak and shrimp skewers as if we're like these assholes that live in the desert that eat lobster and shrimp every day. It was, uh, it was funny looking back, but no lobster and steak for me today. Got these burritos, gonna eat it up, do a little bit more work, and then hit the property for more treasure. I mean, if this lunch is depressing, can only imagine what dinner's gonna be like. acres that we own surrounded by thousands of acres of BLM so I could take a hike every day until I die and probably not see all this land and every day you find something you know one day it might be an amazing huge mine you never saw or another day it might just be the top to a can you know and then you go home and you google that can and you find out around when it was from and maybe you start thinking why was there a can there maybe there's another little shack around there and just leads to another adventure but today what I'm out here mainly doing is scouting for mines. And usually what I do that is if you go to one crest and you look over to the other side and see the tailing piles and figure out where you want to go next. And then when you go over there, you'll see ones over here that you never saw. I mean, it's very difficult to kind of just stumble upon them when you're hiking. So that's why I like to kind of have a little bit of a plan. When I'm out here exploring, I always look for signs of human life. So anytime, obviously, you see something like this, you know, some humans spend some time around here. So if you don't see the mine entrance yet, when you start seeing, you know, the tin or particularly the wood, you know that it's a good sign that the mine is close. So sometimes you'll feel like you're in the middle of nowhere. You'll see just even a scrap like that. It'll kind of bring you back to that exploring mode, put you down your toes a little bit. I think that's always cool. Another thing I've gotten really into recently is rocks. I knew nothing about rocks before getting Cerro Gordo, but look at some of these rocks. I mean, I don't know this for a fact, so don't quote me on it, but I think some of the darker stuff in here is some of the silver ore that they were looking for. Maybe a bits of galena, like this is quite heavy. Sometimes you can smash it, and if it smashes easily, the Galena is pretty brittle. It'll smash quite easily. That one might not be it, but I am much more perceptive of rocks these days when I'm out here. And you can also find something called like 
smithsonite that a lot of people come looking for. And smithsonite, if it's big enough, can be quite valuable, I guess, or if it's the right shape. I don't think I found any, but I've only started looking in the past two days, so don't hold me to that. But yeah, see that? See how that's like glittery? I gotta, I wanna say that's Galena. Hopefully somebody sees this and says, no, Brent, that's not Galena at all, but as far as I'm concerned, that's what they're mining at Cerro Gordo. Given the fact that this is outside of a mine. Yeah, that's Galena. Look at that, how it's, see the, dust too, how the dust is very sparkly when you smash it. So that's a silver and lead combo. It's pretty cool, huh? If you ever see one of these posts like this when you're walking around a mining area, that's a claims marker. So that's kind of barking off some boundaries of where their mining claim was. Here's another tip that might be basic to you, but something to note. If you're walking around in the woods in a mining area and you find the wash like this, so the area where Obviously the snow melts and washes down. Walk the wash. If you walk the wash, there's a great chance you might find something. Because obviously this is where all the water's going. And also uncovering stuff. And another thing is if you're in a mining camp, you gotta figure these trees have grown a ton since maybe these things were left. So if you check around the roots, sometimes the roots push out old uh, bottles. I mean, look at this. There we go. This is the top two what, a pot or something? Boom. So that's a sign that maybe I'll search around a little bit more, you know? See all this stuff? Oh, look at that. Some guy obviously just hacked it up because he didn't have a can opener. You don't find a lot of glass out here, strangely. So whenever I find bottles, I get really excited. And that one's cool. Come on. How pretty is that? I don't mind walking wash. Well, this is the wash you get to walk. Oh, what have we here? This looks new. This is obviously not from, <clears throat> what the fuck is this? A 40 millimeter practice, it's blue, so it's probably practice around. This, again, I'm gonna get corrected just like I did with the Galena. I believe this is a, small rocket launcher. I know there's been military training out here because it's so remote. I'm wondering if that's one of their practice rounds from their military training. Well, this is definitely a very typical day in the life. I was planning on going to a different mine and using the UV light more on a certain rock. Then I started talking about walking the wash and here I am 45 minutes later. Now where I wanted to be, I don't have my tripod, so I'm actually like kind of resting the camera on a rock right now. And I hope it's not moving, but it's actually most of my days. I plan to do something. I see something cool, get sidetracked, go a little further. How it usually works is like you see something and then just a little bit further, you see something cooler. And then a little bit further, you see something cooler. And then before you know it, you're six hours out of your way and you have to get back. But it's part of the beauty of it, you know? I wasn't really going for a destination. I had an idea in mind of what I wanted to do today. That idea changed, found some cool stuff. I'm almost to the peak, so I figured I'd go to the peak. It's getting later than I wanted to. I was hoping to get back already by now. It's probably at least 30 minutes back down, but we just gotta schedule with Cerro Gordo. This is weird. So there's grenades I found earlier. Look, there's more up here. There's at least one, two, three. I don't see the four. I don't see the blue on these. I assume they're practice, yeah, they say practice on them. But still, when you see grenades, but it's like, why are they here? I mean, we're, I guess we're in the middle of nowhere. So for practicing, it'd be all right. So it's shower time, and as you know, if you watch this channel, Cerro Gordo has no running water. And we had it for a little bit, and it's out again today. So this is how I take a shower. I have this thing called a camp shower, and it's got this little fancy temperature gauge on it. And so what you do is take some water, put it in the bag, put the bag in the sun, 
Let the sun heat up the bag. And now we wait. And I get all this water from down in Keeler. We own a property down there, so we're allowed to take water. So I go down and fill these jugs so I can have the water for the goats, cleaning stuff, and showers. We're at 104, so it's about ready to go. Hello, cats. Not right now, I have to go take a shower. Meow, 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 meow. Bag's hanging. Put this over the shower. Turn it on. Boom. You are showering in a ghost town with no running water, with usually with views of goats. It's hard to beat, guys. Oh, we're not gonna waste this, so I'm gonna turn this off. It's my favorite time of the day. Uh, you know I gotta get some mine exploring in each day, so I'm gonna go check it out. There's this mine that I didn't plan on going into the other day. I was just wandering, I found it. Curiosity got the best of me. I went back into it. I ended up finding some really cool things, but I didn't have that gear to bring it back. So I decided to just leave it. So I'm gonna go out there, retrieve that, bring it back and put it in the museum. It's, uh, it's been bothering me, it's been on my mind. I keep thinking, dang, that'd be super cool to have framed in the museum. I get excited about it. Obviously, any excuse to go into the mine I'm gonna take. So let's go get it. This is, you know, kind of where I come to get away. Nobody can reach me out here, out of cell phone reception, kind of out of even the main town, so nobody coming to town can find me. That's my place to just relax. And it's just like one of the only places in the world that I find myself fully, fully in the present. Like when I go back into the mines, time almost escapes me. You know, I'm back there and I'm so focused on what I'm finding, what's around me, my surroundings, that everything else kind of melts away. And I get that literal, you know, tunnel vision that, you know, it doesn't happen that often. I think I'm always distracted looking at the phone, computer, this or that, but back there, that all goes away. And I think that's why I like it. You know, this is a new thing. I didn't have that experience six months ago when I, before I came up here. So, you know, being here has given me that and it's kind of my, my treat, my treasure that I look forward to every day. So this time of day, don't try to get a hold of me because I'm gone. And, you know, it just so happens that I get to, you know, retreat into just an amazing time capsule of history. Almost perfectly intact dynamite boxes. Issue is, I can move a lot of rock. That's a cool though, huh? Gotta look out for that. A little dynamite. We'll continue back. More stuff to find. Dynamite instructions. Super cool. There's a bunch of them up here. I thought I'd frame them. Put them in the museum. Just carefully go through this, just not disturb any old dynamite. Because I remember there was some back here before. I think right there. Some wick. There's some old wick with a blasting cap still on it, see that? That is kind of dangerous. You take your finger pretty easy. Down that box, down that box. We'll clean that pieces. 
rules and instructions. Dynamite. LA Examiner. January 11th. Nineteen twenty six. Brains help win many encounters. This is an article by Ty Cobb. Yeah, <laughs> I am definitely taking that. As a big baseball guy, it's hilarious. Oh, it's an excerpt from his book. Ha! Huh, they were doing that even a hundred years ago. That's coming with us. That's mainly what I came for. Old denim, stronghold suspenders, probably from about 1905 or so. I'll go back in the museum. So cool. Am I ever ending quest to find denim? This brand still exists. It's in Los Angeles. <sighs> Not Levi's, but it'll have to do. Exiting safely, hopefully. Light at the end of the tunnel. Ow! <laughs> Hit my head. Classic. Look at that. Hand done timber. Supporting a bunch of rock. So cool. Kind of like sunrise. Sunset's probably one of my favorite times of the day. You know, it's kind of another reflection time to come and hang out. And we're over on a part of the property that's pretty far away from the town core. And you can see going down the mountain here, some of the old tram, you know, the old cable that would bring buckets down. And so, you know, you would mine the ore, put it in buckets, and then that would send it down into Keeler. The wood that you see missing was actually used and reused to create a lot of the bar in the old saloon. It needed some rehab, so the wood was borrowed from this building to rebuild that. And that's why it's just kind of down to the frame. But after the sun hits a building for long enough, it just gives it this beautiful brown glow, this kind of golden color that we want to use. So this building, it won't be used for anything else out here. It's just gonna end up falling down. So we're gonna reuse this wood in rebuilding the cabin that was next to the hotel. So this will be repurposed as the Crapo house and its life will live on as a mining building. And that's the cable that I was mentioning before. So the ore would kind of be brought down that on buckets and go down and down. And you know, as you can see, heads all the way down the hill. You can even see in the background there the pickup of the, of the road at the very bottom. But generally, you know, if Cerro Gordo is peaceful, this area is even more peaceful because nobody comes over here. Nobody really can come over here. There's a gate. And so this is really, really private. And it's just a beautiful place to kind of unwind for the evening. So this is one of the old miner shacks. This is where they would live. And I mean, you have to figure every night this view hasn't changed. Not a lot of new development down there. So these guys would mine all day, come back home to a view like this. And you can even see some of their old beds, the frames, heater, another bed over there. But this wood is beautiful if you look at it. I mean, that coloration, you just can't fake that. You know, you can't get it anywhere else. And so I'm going to use this wood and I'll be put to good use. 
rebuilding the old crepo house. Before I feed myself dinner, feed the kitties again. Kitties, hello. Hello. How are you guys? So normally I'd eat dinner before the sunset, but didn't quite work out that way today. If you thought lunch was depressing, you haven't seen anything yet. We are scraping the bottom of the barrel. We're down to eggs, Spanish style rice, and organic black beans. That is the cuisine of the night. A lot of times people ask me, hey Brent, how's it going up there at Cerro Gordo? I think to ask the answer that, I'm just gonna text them a photo of this dinner. Well, dinner is served, and you know, we make do with what we have. So I'm gonna eat this, figure out the plan from there. But we got eggs, Spanish rice, beans, and ketchup. The only part about Cerro Gordo at night that scares me, people are like, oh, is it weird being up there by yourself at night? The only part that's weird is this. Outhouses at night are not fun. So, as you can imagine, no, thank you. Other than that, it's beautiful. Usually you can see, find some animals. Like I'll use my light and I'll go like this. And you see the eyes first. You see the eyes before anything else. And usually there's foxes, small bobcats. It's been one mountain lion. I'll try to find one. It'd be cool to find a fox to show you guys. But this light's pretty cool, look how intense it is. There's another outhouse. The moon. Full moon tonight. Damn. That is so bright. Just coming over the peak now. So once that comes, in a little bit, it'll be so bright that it'll actually illuminate the whole town. I don't even need to use my flashlight to get around. It's like a movie theater set when that happens. It's crazy when we were full moons like that. There's my cabin. There's the moon. And you can see even with the moon, it's lighting up enough to where at least you can get the outline of my cabin, which is crazy. I think I'm gonna set up a time lapse. So you can kind of see what's going on with this, but it's... Yeah, Cerro Night's a pretty special place. Crazy, look, I'm using a UV light and all of the paper from the burn site is glowing still. It's got this blue to it. This paper's flown all over the town. I'm using this UV light because if you see a scorpion with this UV light, the scorpions actually glow in the dark. I'll try to find one for you guys because it is spooky when you find one. Not a big one, but definitely glows crazy. The bigger they are too, the creepier they are. And just like that, 
after a really long day of exploring, I'm headed to bed. Really appreciate you guys following me along today. Hopefully it was interesting. And one day I can see out at Cerro Gordo. But until then, it is time for me to go to bed. Good night.